It happened in 2014 in November. I'm a senior in high school and I'm graduating soon this year. I remember feeling dreadful and not wanting to go to school because somehow I knew that something bad was going to happen. After arguing with myself to whether or not to go to school and texting my friends, I decided to go to go to my mom and tell her I won't be going to school since we will only watch movies and eat free food given by the teacher. I've finally convinced her and I went to sleep. Two of my friends also told me that they are not going to school. Then I received a text message from my dad and friends that came from the school. It says the school is on lockdown. All students and staff are to remain inside this, the class. The police are on their way. A student is allegedly threatening a staff with a weapon in hand. This is normal for me. The school lockdown lockdowns when the, there's trouble. It happened twice in five years. At first, my school wasn't as bad as it is right now. We had a student council and we took up to them and they regulate rules and are always the ones to stop the fights or anything that will harm other students. That was in 2011 and 2012. When the seniors were all a part of the student council graduated, everything went bad. As in bad if my school was suddenly reported for drug deals, fights inside the school, my school wanted to fight fight another school and bomb threats. I can recall events where police were was escorting a student a year below, below mine. I was in, on year 10. So this wasn't anything that surprised surprising except the last sentence. I read it again and again to make sure I'm reading it right and I was. The next day, my friends who were at school told me what happened. Apparently, a guy who was six foot tall went on a rampage when a teacher told him off for not doing his work and not graduating. The creepy thing, though, was that he was in, in the same year as me. I often see him at school and he looks harmless. He broke the school windows in the 700 block, went to the cooking glass and grabbed a kitchen knife as a weapon and threatened everyone that he will kill them. They called the police and made the students go to their classes and remain in classes until the police could get into the school. Fortunately, there were brave students and knew how to defend themselves and decided to imprison the student into a closet taller than him. A student kicked the knife away from his hands and then pushed him into the closet and locked it until the police arrived. I don't know what happened after that. There were rumors that he was he was put in put in jail, suspended, ex and expelled, and went to another school. It was a good thing I wasn't there. Many times my instinct had saved me from danger, and this was one of those that I won't forget. To Lucky, who's as tall as a bamboo, let's never meet again. This happened two years ago at my high school, which shall not be named, when I was a freshman. Yesterday in my chemistry class, the teacher was talking about it and it gave me the chills. I got to a medium I go to a medium sized school, about four hundred students per class. However, we only have one uh, about one hundred students enrolled in AP physics every year, so we only have one teacher for the subject. The longtime physics teacher retired, so the school board hired we will call him Mr. Physics. Get it? Ha. Huh. Anyway, from the first day of school, everyone could tell he was, well, different. He would blow up over the smallest things, such as someone writing a formula wrong, just go absolutely ballistic. The first week of school, he made over five students cry because of his outbursts. My chemistry teacher is a is science department leader, so she was very disturbed by these actions. One day, she was going to talk to him about this and if he needs to make some changes or their, the students need remediation. He was not in his room, but she found a pillow and a sleeping bag and sleeping bags and some of his clothes hanging in the teacher locker or every room he has. This seemed a little suspicious, but she did not think it, did not overthink it and forgot about it. Fast forward to December, my teacher's son was in the marching band for school and she had to pick him up around 11 p.m. due to a game very far away. She noticed that his car was still there. This made her grow more suspicious. Suspicious. 
suspicious. But really, what teacher would be there at 11 p.m. on a Saturday night? As the following week went on, Mr. Fizik's outbursts got worse and the students began to fear him more. The following Saturday, my teacher's kids were sick with a stomach bug, and so she went to good old Walmart for some ginger ale. On the way home, she decided to drive by the school to see if Mr. Physics' car was still there. Sure enough, it was. The following week, the physics students were notified that Mr. Physics would be leaving that week, and they could either drop the class without a penalty on their transcript or take it online. The first day of Christmas break, the janitor who said, who was cleaning the school, texted my teacher and said Mr. Physics was standing in his empty classroom staring at the wall. She said if he was still there when he left to call the principals and possibly the police. He was there five hours later staring at the wall. My principals and the police had to end up coming and escorting him out. A week later, my teacher was checking the supplies in the room, making sure everything was okay for her write-up. As she was going through his drawers, she found various items such as razors, rat poisons, and acids. Who knows what he was planning to do with him. So Mr. Physics, I hope we never, ever meet.